The Democratic convention was supposed to be in Milwaukee. The Republicans next week in Charlotte, North Carolina. The pandemic pretty much canceled them both, but the show must go on virtually. And joining us virtually is three-term Democratic Congressman Ruben Gallego of Phoenix. Welcome back to Square Off, sir. Thanks for having me. What do the parties miss by not having a convention old, fat, old style? Well, largely it's because you bring together your Democratic family from all across the country. I've been now to three Democratic conventions. Uh, it's great to get the energy of activists all across the country. Uh, and, you know, it, it, you create some great memories. Now, uh, at the end of the day, uh, it is a lot of work. Uh, you end up spending a lot of money and a lot of energy organizing essentially a five-day party. Uh, so to some degree, uh, while it is not in an ideal situation, this might actually benefit Democrats who could truly focus on organizing and put the money efficiently uh, to the campaigns and not to throwing some big parties. But you also get some primetime exposure. I know back uh, during John McCain's campaign when Sarah Palin was introduced to the country, uh, that gave him a bounce in the polls. Wouldn't you look for a bounce in the poll, poll, say, when Kamala Harris would take the stage in front of thousands at a typical convention? Well, we actually think that, that we are going to actually have more eyeballs on this convention than in past conventions just because, number one, there's just isn't much programming out there, but number two, we've actually truncated the uh, actual convention to about three hours uh, per day. Uh, so we do believe that we're still going to get a bounce. We're probably going to get more uh, people uh, actually looking at this more closely than in the past. And yeah, you know, it, it, unfortunately, you don't have chances to speak. I spoke at the last Democratic National Convention. Uh, it was great. But, you know, at the end of the day, we need to be running the campaign that needs to, uh, you know, that needs to be there to stop Trump. Uh, and this is the best way to do it through this convention. Uh, let's talk about that campaign and Kamala Harris in particular. You signed on yep. to Senator Harris's campaign last September. You were with her uh, for three months as a national security uh, advisor, you know, till the end in December. What did you know about her before you joined up with the campaign, and what did you learn during those three months on the trail? Well, the, what I learned uh, from those months of the trail, she is a very dynamic and energetic uh, uh, candidate. She will go every day uh, until the last uh, voter uh, has shook her hand. Uh, she's extremely bright, uh, and she's very warm. She knows how to connect with a, with a crowd. Um, I think, you know, I saw her in very different settings, you know, whether it be union halls, whether it be with kind of your, um, you know, middle class to uh, independent women, uh, with Latinas in Nevada, uh, and she was able to connect across the board to all of them. So she's going to bring that talent uh, and excitement uh, to this uh, campaign, and we've currently seen that. In 48 hours, the Biden campaign has raised $48 million uh, and many new donors. So this has been a great boon for this campaign, and we're uh, excited that she's going to continue to do this, and I'm excited uh, to continue to help her. How would she be used in this pandemic era? There are likely not going to be any rallies. Much of it's going to be virtual. You know, is, is Arizona, this is a battleground in the presidential race. Will she be here in person, virtually? How will she be, you know, put to use, to put it bluntly? Well, yes, I think mostly will be uh, virtually. She has been here virtually a couple of times, uh, even before this nomination. Uh, she spoke uh, at the Maricopa County uh, Democratic Party convention uh, two weeks ago. Uh, you know, she's done Zoom events with many of us, and I think she'll continue doing that. In person, uh, I don't know. You know, I think we're making assessments all the time based on the health, uh, what will be healthy for Arizonans, and we're not going to risk Arizonans' uh, uh, health with political points. Uh, but clearly, uh, Arizona is a swing state. Uh, you can tell by how many times, uh, you know, the, the president of the United States comes up with reasons to find himself in Arizona. Uh, and we recognize on this campaign, and you'll see Kamala Harris, and you'll see Vice President Biden here virtually as often as possible. Bernie Sanders will be speaking on the first night. Uh, what do you say pro to progressives who still aren't on board with Biden and Harris? Look, this is the most progressive Democratic candidate that has ever been nominated uh, to the country. He will be the most progressive Democrat uh, ever to be president. Uh, and obviously not everyone gets what they want, uh, but we are really pushing the ball forward with this candidate. And we have to recognize that, you know, this may be our last real attempt 
uh, at actually getting uh, any type of free and fair elections. Uh, we ha you have to see what Donald Trump is doing right now, whether it's with the United States Post Office, uh, trying to you know make it more difficult for people to vote by mail. Uh, this person, this president, uh, is trying to, I think, corrupt free and fair elections. Uh, and if we worry about where the progressive movement is going in the future, we may not have a future in at least electoral politics if this president uh, has his way.